Hello and welcome to this Suzucon digital presentation Managing and Monitoring Ceph with the Ceph Dashboard. Ceph Dashboard is a built-in web-based management and monitoring application that is part of the open source Ceph distributed storage system. If you'd like to learn more about Ceph or SUSE Enterprise Storage, which is SUSE's downstream product based on this technology, please take a look at other Ceph related presentations included in Suzucon Digital or check out the SUSE or Ceph project websites for more details. In this presentation, I would like to give you an update on the features and developments in the Ceph project's latest release dubbed Octopus. Let me quickly introduce myself before we get started. My name is Lenz Grimmer and I support the team of developers at SUSE that work on the dashboard in collaboration with the upstream Ceph community. Our team initially joined SUSE via the acquisition of the OpenATIC storage management project a few years ago, which was announced at SUSECON 2016 in Washington, D.C. I'm also the component lead of the dashboard in the upstream Ceph community, where I help to coordinate the ongoing development and collaboration with the other upstream contributors. Speaking of contributors, I would like to start this presentation by giving you an introduction to the team behind this project. This picture shows the dashboard developers at our second face-to-face -face meeting that took place in 2019 in Fulda, Germany. Back then, we discussed and prepared the development roadmap for the Octopus release. The outcome of this meeting laid the foundation for what I am going to talk about today. All of our work and collaboration is done in the open and the team includes representatives from multiple companies that are engaged in the Ceph project. Many of them have corresponding downstream products based on it. So even though we may be competing at the business side, we have a very close engineering collaboration going on at the actual community project level. Someone once coined this term co-opetition for the mode of working. I think it captures this very accurately. I usually do a more in-depth review of the evolution of Ceph dashboard to set the stage. For the sake of time and since this list is growing longer with each release, I'll only give a quick summary of past dashboard releases today. If you would like to learn more about the state of the dashboard in past Ceph releases, you can find a previous recording of my presentation on the SUSECON YouTube channel. Ceph Luminous in 2017 was the first major release that included a web-based dashboard that provided read-only insight into some of the key metrics and services. SUSE Enterprise Storage 5 was SUSE's downstream product based on this release, but it used OpenATIC as its primary web-based management and monitoring interface. As there was a growing demand in the Ceph community in having a built-in web-based management and monitoring application, the OpenATIC team at SUSE approached the Ceph community and offered to take the lead in creating a new application that would provide the requested functionality. So after Ceph Luminous was released, the team got started by developing a prototype, implementing it for demo purposes first, and then started developing a new dashboard more or less from scratch, but taking inspiration from the experiences and lessons learned in the OpenATIC project. As you will see in a later slide, early dashboard versions still resembled the OpenATIC user interface quite closely but it has evolved quite a lot in the meanwhile. The new dashboard, B2, based on the new architecture, was first released as part of the Ceph Mimic release in 2018. It provided all the functionality that the original dashboard implementation included, plus a few features that were contributed to the Ceph project after Luminous was released, as well as some new features. However, Mimic didn't get a lot of attention because it was considered a development release by the upstream Ceph community, there was no downstream product based on it. Nevertheless, it helped us in making good progress in growing the contributor community around this component. The next major milestone for the dashboard project was the Ceph Nautilus release in 2019, which is also used as the foundation of SUSE Enterprise Storage 6. A key achievement was that we managed to reach feature parity with OpenATIC, plus many additional new features that were not part of the dashboard before. As an example, the dashboard in Nautilus added support for multiple users and roles, single sign-on support via SAML v2, internationalization, as well as more powerful OSD management, pools management, and support for managing NFS and iSCSI targets. 
In the next few slides, I'll quickly flick through some screenshots of the previous dashboard incarnations to give you an impression of the evolution this project has been going through so far. Here's a screenshot of the landing page of the read-only dashboard in Luminous. It provided an at-a-glance overview of some of the key metrics and had a few sub-pages that showed more detailed information about some components like the object gateway or the OSDs. Dashboard in Ceph Mimic will likely be very familiar to users that have been using Openatic for managing their clusters before, as we've been using a very similar design for the overall layout. But it also still resembles the original dashboard quite closely. This is a screenshot of the dashboard landing page in Ceph Nautilus. As you can see, We've made notable changes to the page layout with the intention to show the most important health indicators and metrics on a single page. That can fit on a full HD screen that you could have on permanent display in your data center, for example. In addition to many new dashboard features, like the possibility to create multiple users and roles, it also included a lot of new Ceph-related management features and also supported the embedding of Grafana dashboards that will provide additional insight into the runtime metrics of your cluster. Again, if you would like to get a more in-depth overview of the Ceph Nautilus dashboard in SUSE Enterprise Storage 6, consider watching the recording of my presentation at SUSECon 2019 in Nashville, which is available on YouTube. Okay, now let's take a look at the present. The latest release of the Upstream Ceph community is dubbed Octopus, and it was first released in March 2020. It will be the basis of our upcoming SUSE Enterprise Storage 7 product, which is currently under heavy development and testing. Like in the past Ceph releases, the dashboard developer community has been very active in adding new features and improving existing functionality. It will be very challenging to talk about all of them in detail in the amount of time that we have today. But let me try to guide you through some of my personal highlights. Let's start with the overall user interface enhancements. The first thing you'll notice after logging into the dashboard is the new layout with the vertical navigation bar to the left that can be hidden by clicking the classical hamburger menu on the top left corner. The new layout was chosen as we added many new features that made the horizontal navigation bar look too crowded. The possibility to hide it by sliding it to the side creates additional screen real estate that we can now use to display more information. On several pages, the data tables now also support selecting multiple rows to perform bulk actions on many objects at once. The screenshot shows the newly designed landing page with the vertical navigation bar visible on the left. This landing page was specifically designed to display all of your cluster's key metrics and high-level information at a glance. So you can put the screen on an HD monitor in your data center. Um, many of the cards allow you to drill down into further information by clicking on the blue labels. This will take you to dedicated pages that will show more information about each individual metric and component. This slide shows two other noteworthy changes that we've added. On the right, you can see the unified tasks and notifications bar that shows both ongoing activity and background tasks running in your cluster as well as past notifications. You can either remove them individually or all at once. The OSD table shows an example of the new multi-row selection feature. Here you can mark multiple OSDs using the checkbox to the left of each row and then perform a bulk action on all of them. In addition to usability improvements, we also continued adding more functionality and safety features to the dashboards built in user account and password management. Users can now be forced to change the initial password at the first login, and they can also change the passwords without administrator intervention at any time. User accounts can now temporarily or permanently be disabled without having to delete them. The dashboard can also enforce a variety of password complexity rules if required or let passwords expire after a configurable amount of time. While most of these features are disabled by default, 
they can be enabled and configured individually to help adhering to any local password security policies that may be in force. The snapshot shows some of the user account and password related screens like the password change dialog at login or the password expiration message. Lastly, it's now also possible to clone existing roles to save time when creating new ones that are similar to already existing roles. One of the biggest improvements and new features in Ceph Octopus are Ceph ADM and the orchestrator integration. A number of new features in the dashboard are dependent on this infrastructure to perform their work. Using this framework, the dashboard can now give you a much more detailed insight into your cluster's configuration. You can display and filter this information from a per host point of view, as well as from a device or service perspective. Starting with Ceph Octopus, Deploying new OSDs via Ceph ADM will also be possible via the dashboard. Starting with the Ceph release, it is possible to deploy individual Ceph services like OSDs, Rados gateways, or iSCSI using Docker containers. This way, Ceph ADM significantly simplifies the deployment and management of services. Once a new host or new disk drives have been added to the inventory, you can now extend your existing cluster without having to use the command line interface. The dashboard now has a new hosts page that shows hosts that are known to the cluster and allows you to view all devices and services that are running on each host. For smart enabled devices, you can also obtain the individual health status and smart data. Host inventory shows all disks attached to a selected host as well as the type, size, and other details. The Demons tab on the host page shows all services that have been deployed on the selected host, which container they are running in, and their current status. All tables provide custom filters that enable you to further drill down into the data shown on the table. The inventory page aggregates the information of all storage devices attached to all nodes of your cluster, which OSDs they are assigned to as well as other information. You can filter this output in various ways, for example by drive type, vendor or capacity. Clicking the identify button will help you finding the selected device in your data center by making the disk enclosure LED blink for a customizable amount of time. This feature depends on lib storage management, which is an open source framework that provides a unified interface to perform this task on a wide range of hardware from different vendors. The services page shown here gives you an overview about the various services that have been deployed as Docker containers, as well as some more detailed information like the Docker images that they are based on, the Ceph version or their runtime status. This screenshot shows some parts of the new OSD creation workflow. You start by creating a custom filter for your primary devices. All devices that match this filter will be used for the OSD creation process. You can filter by type, like SSD or HDD, vendor, model, and size. When using SSD for shared devices, you can also select your write-ahead lock and database devices in a similar step. After you've defined your filters, you will see a preview and summary of the steps that will be performed. The OSD creation takes place in the background while your cluster remains up and running. The pool management and the object gateway management pages also received a number of updates. We now support new RADOS gateway features like version buckets, multi-factor authentication and placement targets. In creating a new pool, you can now define crushed placement rules to specify device classes, so you can create fast pools on SSDs only, for example. This helps in creating different tiers of storage pools easily without having to make changes on the command line. You can now also define per pool quotas for both the amount of data in total or the number of objects that can be stored in a given pool. The CFFS management page has also received a number of new features. 
It's now possible to disconnect or evict clients from the list of active sessions and to create snapshots of a CFFS subtree manually. We also added support for managing CFFS quotas and added a simple file system browser that allows you to traverse the file system's directory structure. The existing iSCSI management pages were also improved, giving you a more detailed insight into your active iSCSI gateways and initiators now. We also added some safeguards around deleting active IQNs with active sessions. We also further enhanced the integration with the Prometheus Alert Manager, which is a separate service you can deploy in your cluster. The dashboard now shows you all configured alerts, not just the current active ones. While this was admittedly only a very brief overview that picked out some highlights, there have been much more changes and enhancements all across the dashboard that are waiting to be discovered by you. If you would like to get some hands-on experience, SUSE Enterprise Storage 7 is currently in public beta test, so you can download and install the latest milestones on a local test cluster. We are very eager on getting your feedback and impressions, so please take a look. I would like to conclude this presentation by giving a first outlook into our future plans and things to come. As with every open source project, this should not be considered to be a fixed roadmap or a commitment to deliver all of these features. But I think we can at least identify a number of themes that we would like to focus our efforts on. A key theme for the upcoming Ceph Pacific release is likely to further deepen and enhance the integration and support with Ceph ADM. For Ceph Octopus, we tried focusing on the most common day two operations, which is OSD management. But going forward, we would like to also support the deployment and management of all other Ceph related services that can be rolled out via Ceph ADM or the orchestrator. In hopefully not so distant future, we would like to be able to use the dashboard as a kind of graphical installer that guide the user through the entire installation deployment process of a Ceph cluster from scratch. So this is likely a key focus area and it's possible that some of this may even be backported into future Ceph Octopus releases. Another key theme is closing feature gaps. The various services of a Ceph cluster like RBD or RGW are constantly evolving and getting new features, so we always are trying to catch up with the latest developments here. Last but not least, we always try to enhance and improve existing functionality and work on better usability and user experience. We would like the dashboard to be an application that Ceph administrators like and actually want to use to perform their jobs. So we're very keen on getting your feedback here. If there's anything you're missing or if you find any part of the dashboard to be confusing or not helpful, we'd like to know about it. Please get in touch with us to share your impressions and ideas. Okay. At this point, I would normally switch to an interactive Q&A session to answer your questions. If you have any, please submit your questions online instead, and we will post our responses on the SUSECON digital website. Thanks for attending SUSECON Digital. I'd like to thank you for watching my presentation, and I hope you found it useful. Thanks again, and goodbye.